Across the hills of Caroline I feel something in the air A new song is on my mind The sweet melody I hear Was sent from heaven above The song that I'm singing Is of everlasting Welcome to Cooking with Miss O. Let's join Mary Beth Oxendine in the kitchen as she teaches you how to cook Southern style healthy. Welcome to Cooking with Miss O. This is the first new show we have for the season this year, and I have two guests on, but Gus really isn't a guest anymore. Everybody knows him. Hey, Mary Beth. How, how are you doing, Thank Gus? Thank you for having me again. Oh, listen, you just come regularly. It's fine. Everybody asks me how you're doing. Well, I'm, so, Gus is doing doing good. good We're good. doing better. We, we've, we've got something pretty right over there. We that do, don't we? Just that, up the show. That's right. <laughs> and it's Rebecca. Yes. Rebecca and I have met. And she's from um, Anderson, and we ate at Panera the other day, didn't we? Because it has Springer Mountain That's Chicken. Correct. <laughs> and so um, we just want to talk about this is going to be a two-parter, and we are going to teach you the broth that I keep talking about, and of course it's going to be with the Springer Mountain Chicken, and because we have so much flu in our area right now, That's and really my little grandson who just turned one had the flu, and it was really scary for us, and so and Rebecca is going to talk about her story because she is one year older than my daughter and 26 years ago my daughter um, was only given 10 days to live by at Eagleston Hospital at Emory and they didn't know but when they told us it was her second birthday and so um, in three months after we came home in our town and the whole Clemson Central area was praying for us in the Easley um, we didn't know but a, a lady who has been on here she taught me how to do this broth with chicken like this. And um, actually, we had good chicken, but it wasn't as good as what we have now. And as soon as that came out in the grocery stores, I changed right away. And um, But before I ever knew you, years and years ago. And she, while we were talking, told me how she was healed mm -hmm. by using Springer Mountain Chicken. And the funny thing is, we have a book, y'all, that we both have. Is this yours now? Yes. Let's do the first one. Okay. Um, Jordan Rubin did the Maker Diet. He's a Messianic Jew and friends with Dr. Stanley. And in this diet, I believe this book came out in 2004, and God gave him the same thing to heal his body. He was in college, and God healed his body mm -hmm. um, just the same way with the same things that I was taught um, 26 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think it's amazing because when God... Um, does a healing, he, um, he, he uses the same stuff, and it's food. Mm -hmm. Food, um, so many of our um, you are what you illnesses, eat. Yes. right, that's it. And, and I feel like that we need to thank Gus, and we need to make sure that we buy his product, and if y'all need coupons, all you have to do is email us, and Tobin and I will send them out. And so many of y'all I see around, so I always have coupons in my cart, just ask me, okay? Because I'll give you as many as you need for your family. But um, I just want to keep this company going because... When you hear her story, you'll know why. Mm -hmm. We do not need to lose your chicken. Well, thank and you, I think Mary God Beth. obviously touched you to make thank you, you want to do this because you didn't have to do this. You already had a chicken company with That's your correct. dad and your uncle. That's and correct. you stepped out. And you stepped out knowing that you might not make it with this, but you did well, it anyway. I wanted to make a better product, and it mm -hmm. is a better product. Oh, and yeah. There's no pesticides. There's no antibiotics. It's uh, fed an all-vegetable diet. Uh, we were the first uh, chicken company you see right up here is uh, 
We've got uh, certified by the American Humane Association that we're good to our chicken. Right. We're the very first company. It makes a, a, a more tender chicken. It really does. We, we, we're putting the best product out there that there is. Well, we're also going to show today that it's not just about it being tender, but it's about when you um, cook the whole chicken and use the bones and make a broth from it and from the meat that you can heal people. It is actually God's way of healing people. Yes. And so this is not only just a chicken you're having for dinner. Now Southerners love our chicken. and um, But this is a chicken that can heal you. All right. And that's what I want you to understand today. Um, Gus, um, we want to thank you. Well, thank for you. This. Thank and you, you want to tell us you won the award, which is the biggest award in America you could win over your food. Right? I, I did. I was I was lucky enough to be awarded the American uh, Humanitarian Award of, of the year from uh, the American Humane Association. That was it was in uh, 2014 is when it was. And it's better than organic, right? It is better than organic. Okay. Yes, organic. You can still use antibiotics. Mm -hmm. uh, organic, you have uh, uh, access to the outdoors, and when you get on the outside, on, on the outdoors, when the chicken gets on the outdoors, it's going to pick up whatever's on the That's ground. Right. You don't know what it's feeding. Uh, it's uh, ex exposed to predators. It's exposed to diseases. We, we don't do that. We, we raise our chickens in, in houses. A lot of people said better than they were raised in. Yeah, I was in one of those, and that was the most amazing thing I've it ever is. seen. The chickens are very, very well taken oh, care of. Oh, they're just and fed beautiful. the best diet that there is. Because now we don't know if they're pecking out in the yard what pesticides have that's been right, on, and they're that's the problem. Up, that's yes. right. They get exposed to, like I said, diseases and stuff, like a Nile virus, all that. That's right. Now, I'm going to tell you, too, we were doing a show here, and um, I left my Springer Mountain chicken broth at home accidentally in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So Gus ran out and got me some organic, and the only thing he could find that was organic was in the boxes. Well, I had never used the boxes. But with my daughter being allergic to chemicals, um, I can tell the smell immediately. I can taste it and know immediately. And um, because I had to, I'd have to taste food before she could taste it or else she would get sick or have a reaction. And, um, but I opened up that box and it smelled. You could tell terrible. immediately, couldn't you? You could tell it wasn't. So what I'm we didn't use the chicken broth no, that day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so sorry, and you spent the money on it. And I'm so okay. sorry. Okay. But I said, guess we're throwing this yeah, out. We didn't use it. Um, and I'm really sorry about that. But y'all need to know that it's really easy to do this. And when we show you this today, we also want you to know you can freeze it up. So I have frozen chicken broth like this, healthy broth. You can drink it in a cup if you're sick or if you've had surgery. If you have a child that's had their tonsils out. All you need to do is make you some whipped potatoes, but don't put any milk in it because that will give them mucus. And so what you do when you put it in there, don't put any butter because that would be too hard on their stomach, and you use Yukon Gold potatoes, and then you mash those up in your mixer, and you mm -hmm. put the chicken broth in there, and with what we put in it, this will heal your child. I had to do that with my daughter when she had her tonsils out so that she would get strong faster. And it worked. It worked. And then you can just drink it as a cup like a tea if somebody's sick, and especially when they have tonsils, um, it's taken out, it's real sore there, and that right. just heals it. It's wonderful. Yeah, Good and sexy. soothing, isn't it? Yes, it is. talking about flu season, this right. is a great way to build up your immunity to prevent you from eating and getting, getting the, flu the flu to begin That's with. That's right. We, um, I've only had the flu once, mm -hmm. and um, that was it. But um, I also don't take the flu shot, but I'm not bragging because I don't want to get it. But I, oh, I, I don't know about that either. <laughs> I, I take some, sometimes I take it, sometimes I don't. I had a friend of mine, uh, he said, I'm not shooting my body full of poison. I know, that's what I'm worried taking, about. Taking I do shot. have a sister-in-law and um, a best friend that both um, took the flu shot same year actually and um, and she even works at Duke my sister-in-law and uh, they both came down with uh, cancer oh and no, they related I it, wasn't from flu it shot. was now, I have heard you know some people say well I took the flu shot and took me about a week but I finally got it got the, got the flu Oh my gosh, are you serious? I'm sorry, that went right over my head, sorry. I'm sorry. I, I used to be a blonde when I was little. So. But, um, and I don't dye my hair, y'all. It just turned red when I was 13, so. But I was a blonde. Now we're gonna do this, and um, you have a verse to share with us, don't you? Uh, I do. Did you wanna share your verse first? Um, yes, I could, that's right. Um, this is what I've said before in Psalms 30. Um, verse 5, I have this up in my bedroom when I wake up in the morning. I can see that verse um, because it, it's really, I used to have it in the kitchen. But it says, um, Sing to the Lord, you saints, of His praise, His holy name. For His anger lasts only a moment, but His favor lasts a lifetime. And weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. 
That's absolutely right, Mary Beth. And I feel like joy is something that uh, is a gift from the God that He'll never take away from us, That's like right. our salvation. So when we come to know Jesus Christ, we are given that gift of joy. And oftentimes as Christians and as non-believers as well, um, people have this misconception of joy, that joy is something that will fill you with happiness. Um, and, and it does bring a sense of peace and calm, but it's not the same as happiness. Happiness is something that is uh, temporal and something that mm -hmm. is fleeting, um, mm -hmm. whereas joy lasts forever. Forever until we go mm -hmm. home to be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And joy shows in the face. There's it also does. another scripture, Psalms 34, that says, um, those who fear and love the Lord, their faces are radiant and they have no shame. And I didn't quite understand the shame part, but as I was praying about it, God showed me in another scripture that um, the shame is um, when we're not saved. And he takes all of that away because we're mm -hmm. all sinners. I mean, everybody is. Nobody yeah. gets away from that one. But thanks so much. We're going to a commercial break. Thank you. Welcome back. And now, Gus, we're ready to put our... All right. And Rebecca's going to gonna start Farms. chopping for me. Now, Rebecca, we have the organic garlic, and we're going to do five cloves of this. This is a whole bulb. And so she's going to cut the two ends off right here, and then we're going to take it out. Now, you're not going to take but this top skin that's around the whole bulb. We're going to leave the skin on the, um, the garlic clove. And now, Gus, we're going to... I use gloves, I buy the gloves at Dollar Store, and I do that to be very careful because you don't want to have um, anything that we don't want to contaminate. Cross, cross contamination. Yeah, yeah. So much of this, ladies, we learned from our moms, and we've done it. And, and it's um, such a shame that they, that they don't teach home economics in school I anymore. I would love to be the teacher for that. I think you do a good job at that. I would like that. Actually, Gus, and I need to tell y'all, I am going to be doing a lot of cooking classes in February and March in different places here in the upstate. Uh -huh. And so, um, how can how can people find out? When Toe gets back from, he handles the website. When he gets back the fifteenth from Bulgaria, he's over there at that children's home again Correct. that they support, and um, he um, he will put it up on the website. Great, and so it'll be like at, at different venues you'll be right. doing That's cooking right. schools. Now, you can take the giblets out if you want to. Uh-huh. I, I don't. You just leave them in? I just leave them in because yours aren't wrapped in paper. Let me make sure That's they're correct. not. they're not. They're just in there. Yeah. I there leave them in there because that's nutrition. Very and, well. And um, I'm going to set this here and then use clogs on that. I'm going to wipe this up. Excuse me, Gus. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do clogs here um, on this. That ran through that. I would put it, I have a pan that I put that on and then I Clorox it, and I just didn't have that here today. So um, now I'm going to get rid of these. Now, Rebecca, would you take our plate here of the stuff we've already washed and just cut the ends off of the two stalks of celery and the ends off the carrots and then cut um, the celery in half, please? And we're going to stick that in. So you put the, the chicken in about two cups of water. I'm gonna put a little salt, celery, right, onions. Let me get this here, guys. Carrots, yes. and uh, spinach, raw spinach. Raw spinach. Okay. Yes. And would you pour that water in for us, Gus, and pour it on the side so okay. it won't splatter back at you? Okay. Okay. That is great. And I think you're probably gonna need another one of those. Yes, so that know. was two cups right there, but Great. you're just now, saying just fill it up. Go, yes, sir, to two cups. Well, it doesn't have to be measured. Y'all, we're going to use fresh parsley here. We're just going to put this in this because this is all going to soak down, okay? And you can just pour over that. Right, you want the and water, I, the water to the chicken to be completely submerged yes, in the water. Yes, yes. The other thing is, too, I leave the skins on the carrots because they're organic and we've washed it. I leave, um, I don't take all the skin off of here at all or off the, because there's nutrition in that too and people don't realize it. And then sure when is. we're through with this, it's totally cooked and then we skim mm -hmm. and we drain it. But I don't drain my vegetables off. Now when we're done with this, uh, cooking today, it's gonna cook about three hours 
And when we're done cooking it, I put the whole, everything, the chicken and all of this in the refrigerator for 24 hours. And then it- After, after you cook it. After it's totally and about, cooked. And about how long do you let it cook, Mary? Three Jill? hours. Three, three hours. Least three hours Three slow. hours boiling? No, I boil it, get it hot. Uh-huh. And, uh, and then as it goes down, I can put the lid on it. Um, so um, this is a Pampered Chef um, stock pot, and I think I've got it really full here, but it will start going down. Now, Rebecca, tell us why we want the bones in a healthy chicken. Absolutely. Would you read that out of the Maker's Diet for yeah, us? Yes, so I'm going to read this to y'all from the Maker's Diet. This is Jordan Rubin's second book, um, The Maker's Diet Revolution. And he says in here, he's talking about his Grandma Rose's chicken soup, which is where we're getting a lot of the ingredients for this recipe we're cooking today. And it says, keep in mind that stocks, broths, and bone soups are to joint and inflammation what fermented foods are to gut health. Meat stocks and bone broths promote a healthy inflammation response as well as joint health and flexibility because these meat stocks contain protein, minerals, gelatin, and fiber in forms that are easy for the body to assimilate. Gelatin and cartilage are very important in our diet. It does help a lot with uh, bone health. I can attest to this as someone who was told that I have arthritis at a young age. Um, that when I started eating this way and introducing gelatin and collagen in God's form, in the most natural form, that I was, I was healed. Right. Tell him what else. You had your gut, the doctors had said. Oh, um, yes. Um, I, I experienced, you know, a, a whole range of symptoms. Um, one of the worst being just the chronic nausea and vomiting on a daily basis. And eating foods like this... Um, not only help to restore my digestive health, but also uh, taking um, SBOs, which are soil-based organisms, helped as well, and um, eating natural chicken that's better than organic, like Springer Mountain chicken, uh, things like this will not only help with digestive health, but mental clarity and um, just an overall feeling of, of health. Right, right. And see, she, my daughter, threw up all the time, had mm -hmm. diarrhea all the time, yeah. had horrible pains all the time, was going yes. blind. She had learned to walk and was now mm -hmm. falling all the time. And she had also turned the color you turned too. Yes, what color? Absolutely, it was you a turned gray, gray color. Mm -hmm. um, I had put on an excessive amount of weight and just felt awful. And I had been praying to God for many years for healing and thought doctors or tests or pharmaceutical drugs might be the answer. And finally, when I had lost all hope, God gave me an answer through the Maker's Diet and uh, restored my health within months. Um, it was night and day, I lost 20 pounds and, and had my energy back and um, felt joy and, um, and, and knowing and hope healthy and again. knowing that yeah. uh, through God and through the things that He creates for us, right. um, that we can be restored. That's right, and your skin went back to normal color, didn't it? And God made me a promise, actually, and you can find that promise in the Bible. You can find many promises there. Um, but in Isaiah 58, 19, He promised that He would heal me, and He kept that promise. Could you read that to us, please? Sure. Let me flip there. Hold on one second. I'll take your time. It's all right. I want to tell you all that the same thing that she used and learned um, 26 years later from when I did with my daughter, we didn't have Jordan Rubin at that time, but Jordan Rubin found out the same stuff too because he was in college and dying. And we'll, we can show you the pictures of what he looked like before and what he did now. And to follow what he did and what we did, we should be so thankful because I used to have to order my stuff from Israel and from um, Italy, from Colorado, from Montana. And there was nothing in the grocery stores that my child could eat. And when I would go in the grocery store, I'd have a big bath towel. I would take Josh to kindergarten. Tom would already have gone to school. And I would put her, because there was very few people in the mornings, because kids, students, we have two universities there, were all at school. So I'd take Tom's big bath towel, and she would sit in it and throw up all the way through the store. And, of course, we were small towns, so everybody knew us. And they'd come up and say, Mary, is there anything I could do? We're praying for y'all. And, you know, we only had 10 days to live, so they didn't do anything really much with Marie. They just sent her home so we could just say mm -hmm. goodbye. And, you know, God was, God was so gracious. And then this lady who was teaching bread-making classes in the Clemson area called up and said, 
Um, I've heard about your daughter, and I think I can help you. Well, she came on our show last year. Remember mm -hmm. meeting her and her husband? And so she came by the house afterwards, and, and I asked her, I said, did you know, I've never asked you this in all these years, did you know that Marie was dying? Because Tom and I didn't, we didn't understand. And she said, oh, Mary, when I walked in that day, she said, I thought she had hours left because of her skin color. And um, I said, what? She said, Mary, I didn't come here to heal Marie. I was the biggest one shocked of that. She said, I came to help you deal with your child dying. I was going to teach you how to make bread so that your anger could go into the bread instead of in other areas against your family or, or whatever, you know, because in grief mm -hmm. you do a lot of things, you know. Yeah. And, and that's thought, really important to our health, too, is uh, what we have in our minds. Any right. negativity or anger or anything like that. Um, can be just as bad for us as eating things that we know are unhealthy or right. Um, right. can be very toxic. And um, I haven't washed these yet. This is organic spinach. Now, I she hasn't done that. that before, but mm -hmm. I put organic spinach in here too mm -hmm. because it's got a lot of nutrition to it too. Mm -hmm. Now, when sure. now don't be scared, y'all. You're not going to sit down to a pot of all these vegetables you probably don't like mm -hmm. or you like some of them. That's true. But what we're going to do after the, you know, after you have cooked it for three hours, it's on medium right now, mm -hmm. and you cook it, it'll get down, and then you can put your lid on it, and mm -hmm. you can just let it simmer for three. If you want to go four hours, you can. Mm -hmm. Then you leave the chicken in there, all the stuff in there. You put it in your refrigerator. Don't let it sit out um, and cool. You can you know, dump it in another thing, another pot or pan or something like that. You don't even have to put a lid on it, but you can if you want. And then put it in your refrigerator till the next day, and then take the chicken off the bones. But just let all that go for the next day. And okay. you can strain out all the parsley and uh, everything. vegetables as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and just have a clear broth. Yep. And that's what I do. I don't use these same vegetables. I clear it out. And then when I do make chicken soup, I cut up new vegetables and put those in, and then it looks like a regular normal chicken soup. Mm -hmm. But it has the best flavor flavor and the best nutrition. Because right. of the ingredients that you put in there right. when you cook it down. Right. Um, now if you want a yellow onion. broth, what you can do is with the onion, you can just take a yellow onion and you take the top layer off and then you can put that in there. It's commercial break. Sorry y'all. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Welcome back. I've come to the great conclusion that I need a taller stock pot. I gave my taller one away because I didn't think I needed it anymore, but I do. So I would use a bigger pot than I did today. We just all want to tell you all goodbye, but we're going to be back on again next week. This is a two-parter. So thank you so much. I hope during the week you go ahead and get your Springer Mountain chicken and you go ahead and make your broth so that if anybody in your family gets sick, you have something already ready, okay? So we just want to... Thank you, Mary Beth. Yes, thank you, Bye-bye. Bye, Thanks so much, and we really appreciate it. I want y'all to have a great week. Join us back here, and we'll tell you how we deal with all of this and what else we do. It's really smelling good. It is, mm -hmm. isn't it? Making yes. me hungry. I know. Yes. <laughs> and um, I want y'all to tell me when you do make this whether you liked it or not. Okay? Give Mary Beth some feedback. Yes, I would love that. Thank you so much. Have a blessed week, everybody. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.